Hi, my name is Brian Caffo and welcome to the Ask Brian part of our newsletter. Each week I'm going to try and answer a question that I get from a submission on the Google form that we have. So submit me some more questions. I'll take them as I see them. Uh, it, there was a couple this week and I have decided to pick up the softball question out of them. And someone, or actually more than one person asked this. They asked, you know, basically I'm new to R, I'm starting out in the specialization, and I'd like to know what kind of resources are available to learn R. So I'm going to answer this question very broadly. Um, the first thing you want to think about is follow everything Roger peng has been doing. Just Roger Pang, Roger Pang, Roger Pang. He, he is uh, the Justin Bieber of R instruction. So he has a Coursera course called R Programming. And if you want one for, that's kind of focused on graphics, you have the Exploratory Data Analysis R um, class that's based in R that he teaches. He has a LeanPub book um, that you can download uh, called R Programming. It's actually the top selling LeanPub book of all time. So you can, um, you can download that. Um, and in addition, him and Brooke Anderson have created a new specialization called Mastering Software Development in R. Now, I think you should probably want to take the software development classes after you've maybe gotten a little bit of R under your belt. Uh, but it's a whole specialization in Coursera. And I would say, you know, the further you get in R specialization, you'll just know more R, you know, by osmosis because it's the tool that's used throughout the specialization. But uh, so, so now let me talk about things you can do if you're sort of an expert and things that you can do if, you, um, you know, if you're just really getting started and even Roger Pang's R programming class seems a little hard for you. So if you're in that latter camp, if, if you really want to know how to get started, the, the very basics, um, I recommend this program called SWIRL. It stands for Statistics with Interactive R Learning. It was created by a former uh, grad master's graduate student here, Nick Carchetti. Uh, the great thing about SWIRL is that you learn R in R. So you basically, it, there's some steps on the website. If you just type in SWIRL R in Google, I'll put some links down at the bottom. Um, if you type in SWIRL R, it will you know, it'll give you some instructions on how to download Swirl and how to start using it. So it'll walk you through some various, uh, you know, various basic commands and it'll check you when you type them. If you mess up, it'll actually then um, let you know. And then if you do some good, it'll be like, yay, you're great. Okay. Um, so Swirl is fantastic. One of the problems with Swirl is, is it, it you know, it, as a starting point, um, you're ha you, you have to know how to download R, install it, get going, know the basics of you know, working with a console versus an editor, that sort of thing. Um, there's another program uh, called DataCamp. It's a website. And so it really re reduces the barriers to entry to learning R down to the absolute bare minimum. It is interesting to note that DataCamp hired Nick Carchetti. Um, so he's one, of the, he's one of the content managers there. Um, DataCamp is a great way to learn R and the, the benefit it has over Swirl is that you don't even have to install R, you just go to a website, it does the same thing. It, it prompts you with questions, you type them in, it gives you feedback, it gives you praise when you get things right, um, it keeps a little running score for how, long, how far you've made it through the module. So it's really a great program. So what, you know, kind of what I like about DataCamp um, is that it's just in a web browser and you don't need anything. What I like about Swirl is kind of the exact opposite, is that it, it does force you to, to start up R and get R going so that you can actually um, you know, start working in an R environment, in a real R environment, and that's what I do like about Swirl. Now, if you're on the other end, and those, those are the things I would, I would mention starting. Now, if, if, if even those things are problematic for you, then I think what you might want to consider is taking some, some basic Coursera computing and programming classes, right? If, if really you're, you're at C, even with the, the real basics, that I think you should, you should, instead of focusing on R at that point, you should focus on basic you know, uh, computing skills and programming skills um, and then go on to R. And there are some Coursera courses on th those topics. Now, if you're on the other end, if, you're, if, if you find the content of, say, our, Ro Roger Pang's R programming class a little bit easy and you really want to get deeper into R, I really think you should probably look at some of the work by Hadley Wickham is really a, gr a great place to start. Some of his books and tutorials um, on, on working a little bit deeper in R, is, is, those would be a great place to start. 
Another thing I would say to do is download the book Writing Our Extensions um, and really dig into that and really learn, you know, memorize that document. Um, the, the final thing I would say to do, and this helped me a lot in learning R, now I'm, I'm certainly no Roger Pang or Hadley Wickham or Yihui or any, any of these folks that really knows R really well, but one thing I did that helped me a lot, especially when I was learning how to interface R with low-level languages like C or C++, is I downloaded the R source code and I started digging around in it. And that really helped me out uh, for a while. I, I wouldn't be able to do that anymore. I've let those kinds of skills atrophy in my case, and I'm more of a high-level R scripter now at this point. But back when I used to be involved in such things, um, that was really very useful. So if you haven't done that and you're the kind of person who's looking for very high-end R skills, um, I would definitely suggest doing that. Okay, so that's this week's video. Next week's video will answer some different questions, so make sure to submit them and uh, look forward to seeing you next week.